situation is, it can be very overwhelming. You look at the whole scope of work for what we have in a week. And I, as Ford mentioned, we're such a small studio, there's only two of us. So we're looking down the barrel of, let's get a minute and a half of animation in a week between the two of us. Now on Monday, I come in and I do the quick math. I'm like, oh my gosh, 90 seconds of animation. That's uh, 1,800, 1,700 drawings. You know, how are we going to do this? Then for whatever reason, Friday happens. We look back and it's finished. And it's this weird blur that happens. And the way we rationalize it, or at least cope with that, is just focusing back to the old adage, it's only one drawing at a time. We have to just keep our head down and just get that one drawing done. That's all that it is. Just focus on that one drawing to the next, to the next. We build the rhythm and by Friday, you know, Bob and I crack a few drinks here and we look at the one minute of animation that got finished, where Monday it seemed completely impossible. And that's the beauty of animation. Um, it, you love it so much, you hate it so much, it's a ton of work, but the reward at the end of that Friday is all makes the whole thing worth it. And that's why someone that's been in the industry for 20 years still has that magical feeling. It's like, well, we created something and we're not exactly sure how. <laughs> and that's our approach to the studio. We, we, just, we just call it magic, but it really is just getting a lot of drawings done a week. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that I, I can still find an audience for all the crap I want to make because I just don't want it to be a memory. I want I want to remind people of just the treasures that we have in this medium and just and the potential for this medium. It, it's it, it, it isn't just meant to be a distraction. It's not just bright, flashy colors. It's it's not just a way to waste a few minutes of time. It's it's something special. And I wish more people at the top of the animation industry felt like that just a little bit because I get this overwhelming sense that there's not a lot of love for animation in the animation industry, like at the top. I don't mean the artists. Hmm. I mean like the people Signing the checks. Telling the artist what to do. And... Sorry. Oh, does that mean I'm right? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, some portfolios that I see, not all, I don't want to you know, make it seem like it's everybody, but a, uh, I would say a lot of them, a lot of portfolios have... Um, uh, uh, it's just, it's, it seems to be like not enough not a lot of range, uh, which could be a bad thing or a good thing. I would say it to you this way, like if you have a certain style that you only do and you don't do other styles, that style should be like really good. It's like it should be like super, super polished so that you really stand out and that people will hire you for your ability in that style. But a lot of times, well, at least on TV animation is that, you know, the, the more versatile you are, possibly the better you are, uh, the better, hopefully, you know, you might get hired at a studio more, you know, um, or, your, or your your options of getting a job at a studio, studio are greater um, because, you know, each show has a different style of animation, a different style of how the show is. And if you're, if you can't, if you can't do that style, then possibly you won't get hired at that studio. But if you if your portfolio shows that hey you know I'm virtual and I can do this style I can do that style I'm, I'm able to do this and that um, it just for me at least it opened up more opportunities so that you know if there was a slow period in animation um, then you know I was doing storyboards if, if, if uh, I wasn't doing storyboards I was doing character design if I wasn't doing character design you know I was uh, when I was doing Flash I was doing Flash animation. So that helped me. And again, I'm not saying it to artists to say that you, you, this is the in all be all, but I think at least if you are trying to get your foot in the door, the more, the more talent that you show you can do, uh, possibly that will open the door. All right. 
That's the I. So now we're up to the D in ride. And this, I cannot overemphasize how important delivery is. Delivery is our D. Because delivery is the last thing that clients are gonna remember about you. If your delivery is great, they have a good memory, almost no matter what happened leading up to it. Okay. In other words, if you deliver late, they're not gonna have a good memory of you. You have to deliver on time or early. You have to deliver professionally and without an attitude. The last thing they see or hear of you needs to be good because you want them calling you back. As I mentioned earlier, you make more money from returning clients because you don't have to expend any effort or money to find them. They're existing. It costs money to attain a new client through advertising, time, promotion, whatever. Existing clients just means you kept them happy and they call you again with no effort on your own. Okay. So one of the things I talk about with delivery, and I learned this from Star Trek, it's the Star Trek mode of delivery. It works every time. This is this is amazing. So obviously you've watched Star Trek. Just a little bit, yeah. Just a little bit, right. You remember Scotty? Yeah. Right? The engineer from the original series? Yeah. So Scotty, so brilliant. Scotty, when can we get those engines back? Cotton, the delinium crystals are totally depleted. It's going to be at least two weeks, Cotton, before I can get anything going. And then 32 minutes later, everything's running in Scotty's a Hero. So what I learned from that is overestimate how long something is going to take to do and then deliver it early. And then you're a hero. Yeah. 